What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Uber Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, we have some interesting news. As IBF, Inter International Boxing Federation, um, sanctioned body, seem to be pointing in a direction, or going in the direction, of having undefeated, rising Mexican superstar, welterweight, world title, title contender, Virgil Ortiz Jr. become the mandatory challenger for undefeated unified welterweight world champion who is the WBC IBF welterweight world champion superstar boxer Earl the True Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr. 27 wins, no losses, no draws, 21 big wins by way of knockout. Earl Spence Jr. is 31 years of age, stands at five foot nine and a half with a 70 two inch armage okay so with that said Earl Spence Jr. uh obviously was getting ready going to one of the biggest in the biggest fight of his career against legendary eight division world champion iconic Filipino superstar boxer Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao that fight was scheduled for August 21st but Errol Spence he suffered a serious eye injury he suffered a detached torn retina which saw him have to um pull out of the fight and which saw Manny Pacquiao face off against Cuban star boxer, uh, who was at the time the super well super WBA champion, um, because Manny Pacquiao was placed as champion in recess. That's your Dana Sugis. So your Dana Sugis, he ended up beating Manny Pacquiao, unanim unanimous decision victory for your Dana Sugis. Uh, he was the co-main event on that card anyway, as it stood. So this is interesting that the IBF is moving Virgil Ortiz junior up in their ranking system to seem it seems that they're going to place him in position to become errol spence's mandatory challenger okay virgil ortiz jr is very familiar with errol spence they're both from texas uh they're very familiar with one another uh, i believe that they even faced off against one another in the amateurs virgil ortiz jr 18 wins no losses no draws 18 big wins by way of knockout uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. is 23 years of age, stands at five foot ten with a 70 inch arm reach. Okay, uh, so he's younger than Errol Spence. He's uh, eight years younger than Errol Spence Jr. My Virgil Ortiz Jr. You know is uh, um, a power puncher. Obviously, you could look at his resume: 18 wins, no loss and no draws. 18 wins by way of knockout. You know, uh, so he's definitely a, a, a big puncher. But he's very young, and to me, he's very green. Now he did have two big uh, victories, big step-up fights and victories in his career against um, former WBO junior uh, welterweight world champion superstar boxer Maurice Mighty Mo Hooker, who is also from Texas area. Uh, he beat Maurice Hooker, and then most recently he beat uh, Igas Kavalaskis, who gave Terrence Crawford a very, very tough fight. Those are back-to-back -back fights for him. And prior to that, he fought Sammy Vargas. So he's stepping up in level of competition every outing, okay? Uh, but the IBF now has moved him up in their ranking system, okay? He is now number five, okay? Uh, he and Errol Spence, they had a little spat at one point in time where uh, Errol Spence, you know, said something that Virgil Ortiz wasn't fond of. And uh, he, you know, Virgil Ortiz, he said, you know, uh, he told Errol Spence, I always give you, you know, nothing but credit. I always support you, so on and so forth. Errol Spence said it wasn't nothing personal he's just talking about you know the fight itself uh the sport itself so with that said he's now number five in the ibf ranking system okay now we know the ibf they stand firm on their mandatory challenges so this means uh virgil ortiz will very soon become errol spence's mandatory that would be a massive fight in dallas Cow uh dallas cowboy stadium in dallas texas errol spence and um you know uh, uh virgil ortiz jr Okay, so he has an inch height advantage over Errol Spence, uh, but Errol Spence has a four inch, uh, two inch arm reach advantage over Virgil Ortiz Jr. And obviously, Errol Spence has, you know, uh, the edge and experience. He's been in a much bigger fight, and Errol Spence is older than Virgil Ortiz Jr. So they're very familiar with one another. This would be a massive fight. Now, obviously, Errol Spence has his sights set on the mass, the, the biggest fights possible. Okay, uh, and he's looking to become undisputed. And Errol Spence, he wants to uh, unify the belts. He was hoping that the fight between himself and Manny Pacquiao was going to be a uh, unification bout, but the WBA, they never reinstated Manny Pacquiao, and then Errol Spence couldn't fight Manny Pacquiao anyway. Uh, so um, Errol Spence, 
obviously it seems like you know um he could be out the ring for the for you know a pretty long stretch of duration you know maybe until early spring of next year you know uh before he is able to get back in the ring you know uh he still has the patch on his eye currently as it stands and uh errol spence you know is going to be looking to unify the belts when he does come back okay uh and that fight that he's more, more than likely going to be looking to have is a fight between himself and your Dennis Ugas. That's the fight most people expected uh, to take place anyway before we got the shocking news that he's going to fight Manny Pacquiao August 21st. So we expected, everybody expected to see uh, Errol Spence and your Dennis Ugas in a unification bout. And then uh, out of the blue, we got Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao, okay? Uh, and your Dana Sugis was the co-main event and the WBA they standing firm. They didn't make any adjustments They still they stood with their decision to you know, uh, keep your Dana Sugis as the super champion. He was elevated He was the regular champion uh, uh, And Manny Pacquiao was placed the champion in recess because his inactivity after he beat former unified welterweight world champion superstar boxer Keith one time Thurman July of 2019 so two two years out the ring for Manny Pacquiao and obviously uh, we had the global pandemic that held Manny Pacquiao out the ring and Manny Pacquiao He has obligations over in the Philippines because he's a Senate and obviously they're doing this is a global pandemic It wasn't a uh, you know, um, this wasn't an isolated incident. Okay. Uh, this was global So Manny Pacquiao who also is looking to run for president uh, in in the Philippines had a lot on his plate and the WBA World Boxing Association they decided with President Gilberto Mendoza to place Manny Pacquiao as champion at recess. So your Danis Ugas, uh, shockingly to many people's surprise, he clearly dominated the fight between himself and Manny Pacquiao as a replacement for Errol Spence. Okay, uh, he's not a big puncher. Your Danis Ugas never been a big puncher. You know uh, he has about 34 fights in his career and only has 12 knockouts. So that's an indication that he's never been a big puncher and he's just not a big puncher. So with that said. Uh, we could possibly get Manny Pacquiao, who seems to be on the verge of activating his rematch clause because he has a rematch clause to face off against, you know, um, uh, your Dana Sugis in an immediate rematch. And it seems like that's the direction he's headed in. According to his team, they're looking to have the Ugas rematch in December or January, no later than January. OK, uh, that gives Errol Spence more time to recover. Uh, Errol Spence comes back, you know, um, obviously he's been out the ring since December himself. So by the time this fight rolls around this rematch in December, that means Errol Spence will have been out the ring for a year. And uh, if fight happens in January, obviously, you know, even longer than a year. But Errol Spence is going to be looking to, you know, uh, get back in the ring. Now, is Errol Spence going to fight a high level opposition when he comes back from this sort of injury? Now, we know uh, coming back after 14 month layoff, suffering that car accident, you know, uh, Errol Spence had, you know, um, came back and he fought one of the best fighters in the world Danny Garcia you know uh, but now we have to take into consideration that Errol Spence now would have been out the ring for a total in two year span he only fought once in two years and he suffered two major injuries in a car accident and a, and a detached retina a torn retina so is Errol Spence going to look to get right back in the ring with the best opposition possible uh, now your Dana Sugis you know, um, his performance against Manny Pacquiao was uh, uh, was great performance. You know, greatest performance in his career. Your Dana Sugis is not a big puncher. So for Errol Spence to come back and fight your Dana Sugis, uh, he's very skilled. He's very technical, but he's not a big puncher. Uh, can Errol Spence come back? You know, a tune-up is a tune-up. You know, I'm not saying your Dana Sugis is a tune-up, but your Dana Sugis doesn't present the, the risk factor of injuring the eye because he's not a big puncher. OK, now you wouldn't want to go back in there with Terrence Crawford or even Manny Pacquiao or, uh, uh, you know, Sean Porter, his activity, Danny Garcia with his power punching ability. You know, those levels of, of opponents, you may not want to take the risk and going in there with those level of opponents. But uh, you go in there with a guy like, you know, your Dana Sugis, not the biggest puncher, it's technical. It's going to be a skill battle. It's going to be a chess, a chess, uh, 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 it's going to be a chess match. OK, and. I believe that that would be a perfect fight. Virgil Ortiz Jr. is a much bigger puncher than your Dana Sugis. So to go in there with Virgil Ortiz Jr., you know, uh, is very risky. That's high risk because Virgil Ortiz has power in both hands, okay? Uh, and so 
you go in there with your Dana Sugars, who's accurate, who's skillful, who's technical, uh, you don't run the risk of re-injuring your eye to the um, degree you will with a guy like Virgil Ortiz Jr. But I can see Errol Spence fighting your Dana Sugis maybe summertime of uh, 2022, right? Come back, fight your Dana Sugis, uh, because I believe your Dana Sugis, if they do rematch himself and Manny Pacquiao, I believe he's going to beat Manny Pacquiao, okay? So uh, you fight your Dana Sugis in the summer, and then Virgil Ortiz is your mandatory in the fall, in the fall or, or or winter, and then Terence Crawford in 2023. Okay, obviously Terence Crawford is the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. Uh, Terence Crawford is going into a highly anticipated showdown himself with uh, two-time welterweight world champion superstar boxer Showtime Sean Porter, November 20th. So he has to get past that task at hand as well. This is the biggest fight of his career. It's the toughest fight of his career. So uh, we got to see if he can get past that task at hand. So let's see how this all unfolds. And I can see Errol Spence, he fight your Dana Sugis in the summer. And I can see him fight Virgil Ortiz. I see, think the IBF is, is heading in that direction and they're going to push for that fight. So that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like your shitty videos. That's all I got for you. Peace. This is Amanda the Real Deal Serrano, and you're watching Blue Blood Sports TV.